Hey everybody, thank you for uh, coming to today's episode of Frugal Tech Live. We're recorded January the 4th, 2011. This is episode number 303 with Todd Salkovitz. He's a product evangelist from Acclivity Software. They make account edge, checkout, and first edge for Mac and Windows machines. I think you're going to find this an interesting uh, an episode, especially if you're a Mac, uh, a Mac fan and or you're interested in business software. Uh, account edge is a very very popular accounting package so don't go away we'll be right back with frugal tech live And uh, welcome everybody on this uh, fabulous Tuesday. This is the first Tuesday show of the year for Frugal Tech Live, and we're so glad everybody can make it. We always like to give a shout out to the sponsors of our show, Wirecast from Telestream and GFI Software. And what an important uh, organization they've been to uh, Frugal Tech Live. And uh, you can dem uh, download any uh, uh, GFI Software product directly from our website, frugalbrothers.com. And uh, I got to tell you, uh, if you are having problems with people wasting time or what we call cyber slacking at work, check out GFI Web Monitor. comes in two different versions, Web Filter Edition and Web Security Edition, or you can get the two combined called Unified Protection. You can go to our site, download a full 30-day working evaluation copy. Try it for your business. You're going to find it, it's an investment, folks. It really is a great investment. Check it out. It's called GFI Web Monitor. Now, we have a great guest on today. We have uh, Mr. Todd Sulkovitz. He is a product evangelist from Acclivity Software. Now, they make Account Edge, uh, Checkout, and First Edge for Mac and Windows. And we want everybody to welcome him to our show. Uh, Todd, we've, we're bringing you on there. How are you today? Good, Bruce. Thanks for having us. Hey, to you. Uh, it's, it's always a pleasure. Uh, we thank you so much for coming on. Todd, you are a product evangelist with Acclivity Software. Yes, sir. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about Acclivity Software, a little bit of history of that, and what you what you do there, what's your job role there at the okay. company? Well, it's a good place to start. So Acclivity Software was born actually in New Jersey, in northern New Jersey, in the same offices we're currently in. And we were first established as a company that later became known as MYOB. So many people in the U.S., Canada, also, Australia, New Zealand, Malaysia, lots of different places might know us as MYOB. But several years ago, some of our managers bought out the MYOB intellectual property, which was the code of our Macintosh product, and also North American rights to develop our Windows product. So the MYOB products got rebranded into AccountEdge. So now Acclivity is the owner of the AccountEdge product line, which serves the U.S. and the rest of the world for the Mac, and the U.S. and Canada for the Windows platform. And as you mentioned earlier, we also have Checkout, which is a point-of-sale system exclusively for Mac users. And we also have entry levels of our accounting software called First Edge for the Mac as well as for the PC. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also offer multi-user versions. So our market is exclusively small business. That's what we do. We help small businesses run their books. They don't have to be an accountant. Okay. Um, so as a product evangelist, what is your role there? I, 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 by the way, I went to your website and I looked mm -hmm. around and I think you were the, uh, when you looked at the people that worked there at Clivity, I think you were <laughs> at the bottom of the list there. And the first thing I, okay, two things. Number one, uh, you were born the day and time that uh, Martin Luther King gave his famous I have a dream speech. That's correct. I had That's to bring correct. that up, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> I That's had to bring my that up. mother every day, I am her dream. So. <laughs> Gotcha. Um, so tell us a little bit about what a product evangelist does. Yeah, that's actually a, a really good question as well, because it kind of does a lot of different things. It includes things like a little bit of product management. So I work on a couple of different teams that help bring our new products and services to market. I also help with our channels, which is our retail channels, our Apple store channels, our consultant and accountant channels. 
I also work internally with our development teams on upgrading account edge every year, for example. I also work with our sales and marketing team. So having been at account edge or at Acclivity and MYOB before that um, for about 15 plus years, I wear a lot of different hats. So I kind of needed the title that covered all those various hats. So I have my, uh, I have my fingers in a lot of different areas of the business, so product evangelist is the best title that covers them all. Okay, uh, so basically you are then, you know, advocating the software to different uh, channels. That's right. Uh, I guess you've done a million plus product demos, plus or minus, according to the... <laughs> That's a bunch, <laughs> That's, a one, <laughs> That's a bunch. <laughs> That's a bunch. Um, so let's t let's talk a little bit uh, and, and get right to it. Um, you make accounting software for the Mac and PC. Yes. All right. Uh, Got to ask you this question. What you know? I mean, the Mac was just the odd duck out for so long, mm -hmm. and you guys have been at this for a while. What? I guess my question is, what kept your faith going in the Apple platform? <laughs> That's interesting. Um, it's interesting for me in a couple of different levels, professionally because of what I just told you that I do, uh -huh. but also personally because the uh, the college that I went to was the first school to require you to own a Macintosh, which is way more years than I'll probably want to admit here on TV. Okay. Um, so we've been Mac developers literally since 1989. In fact, we were the first financial app on the Mac platform when it first started. So we've been doing really nothing but developing new versions of our software for a lot of years. We always we all use Macs for everything that we do. So we're really born and bred a Mac company. We also do, as I mentioned earlier, Windows development, but it's on the same code base that our Mac products are on. So the fact that we can use the Mac, which has all the great benefits of it, you know, lower cost of ownership, all those things extend to us as a small business and certainly extend to our customers who are also small businesses. So the ability to make our own decision, use our own platform, and you know, not follow everybody else, you know, kind of makes us a rebel. So we're Mac people. You know, we develop Mac software. We do accounting software. We're in a very competitive market. You know, it's uh, people liken it to me being a Philadelphia sports fan. You, know, you take your lumps, but when it's good, it's great. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. You know, we like to cover everything. Okay. Um, but I, I, you know, want uh, to us who are Mac uh, users. Mm -hmm. um, I got to tell you, it, it's a blessing that we have companies that recognize the Mac platform, that people really do use Apple machines to run their businesses. Not just, not all of us are photographers and, right. you know, illustrators. And, and some of us actually have to run a business. Uh, my primary business is reselling network security software. Mm -hmm. But we're predominantly Macintosh here. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, accounting is unfortunately, or fortunately, however you look at it, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a bad, you know, I'm kind of bad about paperwork, Todd, okay? So I, I view accounting as sort of a necessary evil, but um, it's important. And when there's somebody that's making some great software, you know, you've got to check them out and you've got to investigate it and learn a little bit about it. Now, uh, is uh, and I had to ask you, by the way, is Checkout f relatively a new product, or is that? Yeah. Okay. So I thought we'd get into that in a little bit, but let's talk about your, your flagship, Account Edge. Okay? okay. That's a Windows and Mac application, right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Do you know about how many uh, users you have uh, of the software throughout the U.S. right now? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a tough question to answer in the sense that, you know, we struggle with this as well. Is what do you consider to be a current customer? Is it somebody who's on the 2011 version or okay. this year's version and last year's version? Okay. So if you go if you go back, say four or five years, and look at the ult the ultimate universe of who would be a customer of ours, who's exchanged value with us, whether it's called support or done anything else with us, you know, it's upwards of a hundred thousand people in the U.S. And then if you add in Canada, that number starts to grow. You add in Australia, New Zealand, the rest of the places I mentioned, all of a sudden you're talking pretty significant numbers in the Mac platform. Um, then on top of that, of course, you throw in the Windows people, which was in that U.S. number, but also in Canada. So, you know, we have a pretty good lineage with a lot of our customers who, you know, have been very happy using our software because as our product has grown, their business has grown. And we hope we're meeting what their needs are every day. And, you know, you're right on, Bruce, you know. Folks go into business to be a landscaper or a photographer right. or a radio host or a software developer, and the last thing they think they're going to ever have to deal with is bookkeeping. 
Right. You know, and you realize that day one. It doesn't take very long to no. realize that you own a house. <laughs> no, I, I so, don't. Yeah. You know, so at the end of the day, you know, whether you realize it or not, you're actually doing accounting from the very first day. In fact, even before the first day of your business, because you're going to start writing checks and hopefully you're going to start getting paid for providing items or buying items from your vendors. You got to take care of that. Yeah. Or getting paid from customers or maybe you got to pay a subcontractor or an employee. You know, all those things that you don't think of as, quote, accounting, that's exactly what it is. You're, you know, you're writing checks, you're getting checks. Maybe you're dealing with inventory or maybe you're getting certifications on services you provide or, you know, maybe you're billing your time. But ultimately, you got to deal with the tax man no matter what country you're in. And yeah. a lot of times that might mean dealing with your accountant. So being able to give your accountant really good reports so they're not going to have to dig through your checkbook. And if your accountant is digging through your checkbook every year, you definitely need to look at our software. It'll save you <laughs> hundreds of hundreds of hours, let alone the dollars, which go into the thousands. Because it's not the price of the software that's going to set you back. It's you know you learning how to use it, getting implemented, getting set up, and really running your business in a more structured format, and then customizing the software to meet you you know meet you in the middle somewhere. So the reality is, is you are doing bookkeeping, whether you want to call it that or not. You still have to manage cash, manage employees, manage inventory, and all those things that roll into all the fancy accounting stuff like general ledgers and financial statements and that kind of stuff. Well, the, the question then becomes, um, th there's different, different vendors of accounting software out there, and I think some of them assume the end user has more experience with accounting and accounting terms than others, right? Mm -hmm. uh, some are very overpowering. Um, there's so let me ask you this question okay um i know you also have a product called first edge yes. okay so if i'm a novice this is my first time you know time around i really don't know anything about accounting okay what would i still be okay to go with account edge or should i look at first edge and then can i graduate up to account edge how does that work well, we, we actually get a lot of our customers who, frankly, use nothing. They use a shoebox. They use Excel. They might use a <laughs> computerized checkbook. Right. So first stage for a lot of our customers is literally their first step into any kind of computerized or automated bookkeeping or accounting. So where the qualifiers come in when you try to decide, you know, is account edge better for you, first edge better for you, is in things like are you doing inventory? Are you doing purchases and tracking of inventory? Are you doing payroll? Are you doing time billing? If you're doing those kinds of things, you definitely want to go right to account edge. If it's really more basic, you're not really tracking much in the way of inventory, maybe you offer some services and you have, you know, under thousands. And I say that I mean under thousands of customers, under thousands of vendors, you know, certainly first edge will take care of it. But we also find a lot of our customers immediately realize they should just upgrade or go right to account edge, and which is easy primarily because the data files themselves are upgradable from one to the next. Okay. One more step, our data files are also cross-platform. So when you get to Account Edge, if you want your accountant to see your data file, not just the reports, but the actual data file, we'll give your CPA a PC copy, a Windows copy of Account Edge. So because our data files are cross-platform, they can literally open your PC, your I'm sorry, your Mac file on their PC or believe it or not, there are lots of accountants out there who use Macs, and they want to open up their their customers' Windows account edge files. So, because the data files are cross platform, that makes a lot of folks' customers, a lot of folks in their accountants' lives, a lot easier. Well, uh, accounting is, um, I mean, it's just such an integral part of business, and I, I you know, and I'm, I've looked at your product, uh, and. Uh, I, and I'm very tempted uh, personally to uh, make that transition because, number one, it, it looks like that it would be easier to use. I, you know, everybody knows that. It's no secret we use QuickBooks for the Mac here. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I came off the Windows version. And, and one thing that you guys do well that Intuit, I have to say, doesn't so much is – the best way to put this is that there's you don't have a difference in feature parity. Right, right. Okay. So the Windows version of Account Edge is going to work pretty much like the Mac version of Account Edge. You're not going to lose features by going from one OS to another, right? Correct. That's huge, it's right? It's going to look the same. It's going to work the same. It's going to have the same file you know, format that I just mentioned. So, yeah, a lot of benefits to go in that direction, certainly. 
And now do you have a, I mean, is it difficult to move from, uh, say, QuickBooks to AccountEdge? Yeah, we actually have a couple of options for that. Okay. When we have a customer who comes to us or a prospect who wants to leave QuickBooks, we explain what their options are. You know, there's ways you can do it yourself. You could export your transactions and your records out of QuickBooks, mm-hmm. you know, your names and your addresses, that kind of stuff. And Account Edge will let you import virtually anything. Okay. So you could do it, you know, run all those files through Excel if you want to be an Excel jockey. We also have a service that does that. We're one of our best certified consultants out there in Texas literally started his own business that we fully endorse that he'll actually do that conversion for you. So he's written some tools that'll take your QuickBooks file, Mac or Windows, and you know consolidate it back into an account edge file, doing the kind of stuff that we're pretty sure the average customer isn't going to figure out how to do on their own. So it's <laughs> right. not like going from you know WordPerfect to Microsoft Word as a bad example, but you okay. get the idea. I get the idea. So you're going from two completely different databases. But we also find along the way, when you really talk to the customer, they realize, you know, starting from scratch isn't the worst thing in the world. And if I can import a bunch of names and addresses and my chart of accounts and my items, the opportunity to start fresh is one of the reasons they're looking to leave QuickBooks because it's been made a mess after all these years. I just find stuff that doesn't work in it, Todd. Mm. Just flat doesn't work. Uh, And And that that can be frustrating. Right, and um, uh, but we're not doing a show about how bad. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. Yeah, yeah I mean, we could. We could probably do a whole <laughs> episode about that, but we're not going to. But what we want to talk about is Acclivity software, okay? And uh, you mentioned uh, to me that you might want to share some, uh, a little bit about Account Edge, and maybe give people, if you've not looked at the software, if you're not familiar with it, kind of an overview of Account Edge. And so I'll be happy to turn this over to you to uh, maybe give us a walkthrough. Sure. Why don't I uh, turn my screen sharing on so you can see all that. Okay. You can tell me when you're ready. We are ready. All right. So what you're looking at is what we call our command center. This is something that we brought with account or actually MYOB version one. And it's how you go and, mod- and, and uh, walk through your software, which mirrors how you would walk through your business. So as you're looking across the top, you see accounts, banking, sales. Those are what we call our command centers with the different modules that integrate within Account Edge, Mac and Windows. So I am showing you the Mac version. The Windows version is 99% identical, look and feel, as I mentioned. So right here, what you're looking at is our card file. And our card file, as represented by the little Rolodex, is where you keep your card list. And that's just the names and addresses of the people you do business with. So as I start to use the flow chart in the center of the screen, the look and feel of each individual command center will start to become real familiar. So I'll go into my card list and there you'll see all of my cards broken down by customer, by vendor. So if I want to see a specific card, somebody I may sell things to, I can either search for them or select them right from my list. So I see this Frugal Brothers software that I want to play with. So I'll drill into their record and here I can see their profile information, obviously their name, address, city, state, and zip, et cetera. I can have multiple addresses, so if I send a bill to the main address, but I want to ship it to one of five addresses, I can do that as well. And this is where I'll put the rest of their contact details in. So if I'm going to do a mail merge or an email or I want to go to their website, this is where I get all that information. I can then go to my card details window, which lets me now start to customize account edge for my business, where I can have different customized lists, different customized fields. I can bring in a picture. I can bring in some extended notes. And now you start to dig into more of the things that Account Edge does as a business process tool. So in this example, you're a customer. I'm going to sell things to you. So typically when I sell to this customer, you know, I can tell Account Edge, this is the way I'm going to deliver my invoice. So I'm going to print my invoice and mail it to you or email it. I can make that choice. I can select your base selling price because Account Edge has multiple selling prices and price breaks, which is really nice. And then I can go into a little bit more detail about all the other defaults that will pop up when I do a transaction to you. So the beauty of this is, you know, people understand this. They understand that when I sell things, I might sell items, I might sell services. You know, how am I selling this? Where am I going to send the invoice? What terms am I going to give you? How are you going to pay me? What the payment method is going to be? And we also have an integrated merchant account process in here. So if you want to accept credit cards, we can work with you here. So when I get down to it, that's how I set up all of my customers and my vendors and that kind of thing. So now let's go over and jump into a sale. Let's do an actual transaction. So, so far, all I've really done is set up that one card. So I'll click on my sales command center, and I'll click on the enter sale button. 
as, as you'll see here, the flow chart a little bit more, a little bit more filled out because there's obviously a lot you do in the sales area of your business. So if I click on enter sales, now another strength of ours comes up, which is that our on-screen forms look like their paper counterparts. So an invoice will look like an invoice. A check will look like a check. Oh, that's Again, good. It makes people's lives a yeah. lot easier because they understand right. you know, how that works. So in this example, I'll type in FR. And since you're the first customer on my list with the words, the letters FR, I'll say it's Bruce. Obviously, it's your business. Your shipping address would come up. Now, all the defaults that I set up in your card now come forth in this transaction, your terms, your salesperson, how you're going to ship this thing, um, how I'm going to deliver this invoice. All those things I just showed you are pre-filled for me. Your terms with your Visa card would be set up. Right. So in this example, I'm just going to go through the fields and say, I want to ship this customer two items from my inventory list. And here is my integrated inventory list. And I can sell, obviously, whatever I've got here. So I'll just say, use this first item. It'll bring in the item number. It'll bring in the description. Based on the, how I set you up again, it'll let me choose where I take this inventory from. So in this case, if I'm a plumber, for example, I might actually count my trucks as inventory locations because I don't have a warehouse. All my stock is literally all my all my guys' trucks. So in this case, we'll use Main Street as a location of where this USB cable is coming from. Your price level will kick in, and it'll tell me when you buy that quantity, there's the price you get. But I like you, even though you use QuickBooks. So I'll give you a 10% off, and it calculates all that. I do all the sales tax calculation. So, so far, you sit here and say, well, what's so hard about accounting? So the part <laughs> that, we, that we're pretty proud of is the fact that we're not going to try to hide accounting from you. We know okay. you're doing it. You know you're doing it. Lord knows your, your CPA and your bookkeeper know you're doing it. So if you go up under the uh, edit menu, I can actually bring up a recap of this transaction. So if I had said to you, hey, we're going to fill out this journal entry, that's when I would expect your head to explode. So in the background, the beauty of our products is you fill out the on-screen forms, we fill out the debits and credits. And that's exactly nice. what you see happening here. Nice. And then in the end, I can record this invoice. I can set it up to be emailed. I can just print it or mail it to you. I can also integrate with iCal, which is pretty sweet. So I can actually have my calendar, my my Mac OS X desktop based calendar, have show me a reminder in say thirty days if your terms were net thirty that in thirty days you owe me forty six dollars. So I can start to integrate really tightly with the operating system and we do a bunch of other stuff there as well. So like I said, it's just a question of filling out the on screen form. I hit record. And then all that nasty accounting stuff gets recorded in the background, which means my inventory levels get updated, my uh, customer balance gets updated, you know, my iCal just got updated. So I don't have to worry about, quote, doing accounting if I can do this form on my computer, which, again, isn't that much different than you would do if you were doing it on paper. So that's just one example, and that's creating a sale, the exact same process for, you know, recording your time or recording your purchases. If I want to go through and process payroll, it's another one of our strengths on the Mac is we have an integrated payroll product. Same thing on Windows. So as long as you uh, keep your software up to date, you'll get all the current tax tables, which is a big issue for small business. Obviously, with uh, you know things going on in tax law now a lot more often, there's going to be a lot of changes to local, city, state, and federal tax tables. And we manage all that for our customers so they just don't have to deal with it. So in the end, it brings it all together. You come back and you can look at your banking command center. That's maybe where you want to look at your bank register because a lot of our customers are cash centric. So they get, you know, that cash is king. So they want to look at the way their checkbook, you know, was shaken out over the course of the last, say, week or two or whatever. Right. So you can manage your business from a very cash perspective if that's what matters to you most. Uh, got a question for you about online banking with this. Okay. Um, with At least with QuickBooks for Mac, some of my. Uh, like credit card companies and stuff like that. Apparently, uh, for whatever reason, <clears throat> uh, their their export files are not always compatible with QuickBooks for Mac. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is that an issue with Account Edge as well, or is that something you've addressed? Yeah, we addressed that in the oh, sense nice. that we'll import <laughs> any text file your bank exports. So obviously, if you're using the other guys, you got to use their export file. Right. One of the strengths of our software is that many banks we know. You know, we'll spit out a text file. We'll spit out a Microsoft Money file still, yeah. you know, an OFX file. So we can deal with any of those file formats 
And as you saw in my bank register window or through my bank rec, that's how I would bring my bank statement in or my credit card statement in. So we take a very sort of agnostic approach to those files. As long as your bank will, will, will send it out to us and we can get it off your hard drive, then we can take it, parse it, help you import it, and then reconcile it or whatever you're trying to do. See, that's a huge, huge thing. I, for me, it is because mm -hmm. I use a company credit card. And I, you know, everything I purchase for the business mm -hmm. goes on the card. And so it's not impossible to have literally dozens of tra transactions right. in a month. And there's nothing more frustrating. I go to import it in. I can't. I've got to manually key all those in. What a time waster. Yeah, I'd be frustrated by that. <clears throat> Second frustration. See, I'm, I'm venting, aren't I? I, don't, <laughs> I, I didn't. Mean, but another frustration, I don't know how, how you handle this, which is purchase orders to invoice. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the QuickBooks world, um, you know, I generate um, an, in, uh, an invoice to the customer. Okay, but then I got to go in and do a, a totally separate deal for purchase order and basically re enter everything, you know, the line items, everything else, and all that. So, my so we, we handle both of those, in fact. Um, okay. So, in, in Account Edge world, you could be doing an invoice to a customer, which you could then turn around and create a purchase from, or you could create a purchase that you then turn around and create an invoice from. So we tie both of those things together so you can go t to either direction from either transaction. Todd, you're selling me on this thing, man. <laughs> it's not hard to do. It's just an hour, and I could sell you a hundred times. It's really not that hard to do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, if I, what, if we're, what if we're growing? Okay, mm -hmm. so, I mean, because this is it's a major investment. Not You know, really, the buying the software is the cheap part. That's right. That's exactly right. Okay. It's training everybody and getting all the things set up and working the way you want it and all the hours that you spend on that. And, so, the, and the challenge there, if I could just jump in there, Bruce, the yeah. challenge there is you just got to be careful with the advice you're given on what kind of software to use. And then, you know, let's, like you're saying, let's be honest about it. Most accountants you talk to are going to recommend somebody else's software. That's just the way it goes sometimes. Yeah. Um, but in a lot of cases, they're recommending that software because it's best for them. They understand it. They know the files. They know what it does. They're not asking Frugal Brothers software, do you sell products? Do you sell items? Do you sell services? Do right. you sell licenses that go with those products? I mean, really, how do you manage the individual cycles within your business, your purchases. Like you just yeah. said, I need to tie my purchases to sales. That's a pretty big requirement right there. And that's something that could make or break your life, depending on how you're doing it. So in a lot of cases, the advice you're given, you gotta be really you gotta be skeptical like anything else in life. And you know, like all good software companies, we offer the trial version. We want you to download it and play with it for thirty days. You know, we don't give you a six month trial because it just means you have six months of doing nothing. We give you a 30 day trial, be serious about it, play with it, use the practice company, which is what I'm using here, and run it through the processes that you run through. You know, whether it's downloading your bank statement or processing invoices or dealing with inventory, you know, really do the things you need to do every day and find out for yourself does this really do, you know, what it is I want to do? Because only I know, you know, only you know how Frugal Brothers really works. Right. Your, your accountant can't tell you that. Your accountant can say, hey, I make, need to make sure, you know, when you write a check, you're debiting, uh, your expenses and credit and cash. Well, yeah, okay, that's like going to the ice cream store and getting vanilla. We all do that. Right. It's how you get to those transactions and how simple they are for you and how easy you can customize the system to match the requirements of your business, which is totally different than the guy who does cut your lawn who's a landscaper or the architect who's going to build your studio. So at, you're asking about, you know, businesses growing. You know, what we find is that the core of every small business, you know, what you would call it the inner circle, the inner pieces of the onion, they're mm -hmm. all exactly the same. You got to have a chart of accounts. You got to have your assets and your liabilities, all that kind of stuff. Your mm -hmm. accountant will give you that or will help you develop one. You know, at some point, you're probably going to start off doing checkbook accounting. All I know is what happens in my credit cards and my checkbook. Before you know it, you're doing accounts receivable, you're getting terms from your vendors. Then all of a sudden, you're doing sales and purchases. And then you hire your first employee. Now, all of a sudden, you realize, you know, I'm not just a landscaper now, I'm a babysitter. I gotta, right. You know, I got to put up with my employees. They want to get paid. Oh, my God. I got to deal with the government. Yep. You know, all this stuff. You know, it's it's not what you want right. the business to do. So that's what our job is to help you make those parts easier. Okay. All right. And uh, so that is just a brief overview of Account Edge from Acclivity Software. I think we're going to take just a short break uh, and we will come back with more 
uh, Todd Salkovitz from Acclivity Software. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this brief message. Is the ever-growing volume of emails and attachments resulting in sluggish email server performance and reduced server storage space? Tired of your users nagging about mailbox quotas? Are your PST files cumbersome and a nightmare to manage? Have you or your email users ever deleted emails by mistake? Have you ever had to retrieve an email thread for HR, legal, or investigative reasons? With the sheer volume of emails growing exponentially and various regulations requiring companies to retain a copy of all corporate email correspondence, email archiving is a must. Put an end to your email worries with GFI Mail Archiver, a leading email archiving and management solution for small and medium-sized businesses with thousands of installations worldwide. GFI Mail Archiver is an easy-to-use email archiving solution that integrates with Exchange Server. It enables you to archive emails centrally to optimize your exchange performance. Tackle the limitations of mailbox quotas, reduce the high maintenance associated with PST files, and provide the functionality for legal compliance and investigative purposes. GFI Mail Archiver also allows you to back up emails in such a way that users can easily search and restore them with just one click. As a result, coupled with its low-cost pricing, GFI Mail Archiver quickly delivers an excellent return on investment. Other key features include enhanced auditing functionality, the ability to archive an entire organization's emails into one or multiple Microsoft SQL Server databases, powerful searching capabilities, and multilingual support for indexing emails. With rave reviews, industry awards, and thousands of customer installations worldwide, GFI Mail Archiver is tried and tested. GFI Mail Archiver, a leading email archiving and management solution. Try a full version for free and without obligations. Okay, and we're back with uh, Frugal Tech Live, episode number 303. We've got uh, Todd Salkovitz from Acclivity Software as our guest today. And I want to remind everybody, if you're watching us on justin.tv, come over to live.frugalbrothers.com. That's the chat room that we moderate. Um, we've got Todd, like I said, we've got Todd. He is the product evangelist with Acclivity Software. Todd? You uh, had mentioned before we went to break that you had some other things to show us about Account Edge. Yeah, one of the things we've heard, and you just mentioned this kind of in your last question, you know, as your customers start to grow. And normally when you think about that from an accounting perspective, you're thinking, oh, I got three bookkeepers, I got four bookkeepers. But in our world, that's not what that means. You know, when your company starts to grow, it means you've got salespeople, you've got field people, you got folks who telecommute like I do. So in a lot of cases, you, your accounting functionality may not grow but the requirement to be able to use your accounting data is what's growing. Right. So based on customer feedback and certainly a lot of requests from Apple, we've come up with an iPad product that I'd love to show you. Okay. So I'm going to show you on my screen now nice. the iPad version, which is called Account Edge Mobile, and there'll be an iPhone version hopefully by the end of January. And when I say an iPad version, the product, which we call Account Edge Mobile, it's not Account Edge on your iPad or Account Edge on your telephone, your iPhone. Okay. What it is is really it's a, it's a remote data entry tool. What our customers told us is, you know, I've got my laptop, I've got my HP or my MacBook, whatever it is I, I travel to customers with, but I'm also out in the field where I want to do an invoice to a customer where I don't have my laptop or I don't have access to my data. You know, it's behind my network or my firewall back in the office, and even sometimes that's more than our customers can handle. They just wanted a really quick way to be able to use their accounting data to record transactions when they're not in the office. Okay. So based on that kind of feedback, we developed this product you're looking at here, which is called Account Edge, Account Edge Mobile. And the goal of Account Edge Mobile is to let me enter a transaction, whether it be a sale. And I can have different types of sales transactions. So I just showed you a second ago in our desktop software how to do an item sale, where here we can do item transactions as well, whether they're quotes or orders. I can do service quotes, orders, and invoices, and time billing transactions. 
And again, it looks just like the paper counterpart. So if I want to do a service invoice, much like a count engine in the desktop, I'm now using that data. So this is the same exact data that I was showing you on a count engine in the desktop. Okay. And we accomplish that by using a service called Dropbox. So a count engine on the desktop, a count engine 2011, will synchronize up to Dropbox, which is a fantastic storage solution. And with a free Dropbox account, by allowing their, their, their APIs allow us to post data, put files up there, I can then put account edge files up there that I then use on my iPad or my iPhone to process transactions. So it's a really ingenious way that our developers came up with giving you the ability to use your actual data to fill out transactions when you're not in your accounting system or on your network. So our customers who told us that they need this kind of capability are folks like architects where they may have three people doing time, you know, tracking their timesheets. So they want to come in and be able to do an activity slip. So they're not going to be in your accounting system, but they're going to be creating transactions, which then get passed into your accounting system. In this example here, I'm doing a service quote. So I may have a guy out in the field who does nothing but quote sales. So he can do that directly on his mobile device. Okay. So the cool part about this is not only can I create the transactions, I can also view my lists, synchronize my lists, add new customers, and all that data gets passed back and forth to AccountEdge via Dropbox. So it's a really neat way to use the iPad, but still have live accounting data at your fingertips. So that's a, that's Account Edge Mobile in a nutshell. That is really slick. Um, and that just, you know, because, you know, we've, we've been talking quite a bit, Todd, about mobile computing. Uh, and it's pretty hard to get away from in that's the right. IT community. And <clears throat> businesses are really beginning to grasp how important a tablet device can be to their workforce, especially their field people. Um, and I can see that uh, as a great convenience uh, and a way to get invoices out to people very, very quickly, um, do presentations. And I can see where this would be an extremely important application to have. Now, I would buy that separately. Is that correct? Uh, you can buy it for free. So all you need to have is AccountEdge 2011. And then you just go to Apple's App Store via iTunes, and you can just download AccountEdge Mobile for free. So nice. we're using our current version because that's where all the you know, that's where all the plumbing is and yeah. the Dropbox integration. But the app itself is free for both iPhone in a couple of weeks and iPad today. Nice, nice. So um, uh, you know, a, another thing, uh, if, if we can, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about your point of sale software. Sure, take a look at that real quick. Uh, so I've, I've got that turned on as well. Okay. Uh, checkout. It's called Checkout, right? And uh, exactly. there's a lot, of, I mean, a lot of uh, uh, retail stores out there. And, and uh, this is, uh, this is a, a, something very, very cool that you're, you're getting. This is something fairly new for you folks. Is that right? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a three or four year old product. And we work with a joint venture with a partner company out of the Netherlands. So they do the core development where we do all the sales support, marketing, and customer service side of it. Um, so Checkout, which has actually won an Apple Design Award, as a runner-up as an Apple Design Award, I okay. should say, you know, which is kind of unique for a small business application to win any kind of award for usability and interface. Right. And what's cool about it is you know, there's a little bit of overlap between what Account Edge does, because you can issue, obviously, invoices and track items. But I wouldn't position Account Edge on your desktop as a point-of-sale system. Right. That's what Checkout That's not does. what it does. So, right. Although it does, you know, although checkout does, you know, obviously, like here's a new sale transaction screen. You know, if I want to bring my customers in, I can drag and drop and do all those really great things that a Mac or a PC is really great at doing. But a point of sale thing is a little bit. A point of sale system is significantly different than just a regular old accounting system. Okay, sure. It means that you know I'm going to connect to a, 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 a cash drawer, so I can have a receipt printer as well. I may have a barcode scanner so I can deal with uh, barcode scanning of UPC codes, that kind of thing. So it gets into a lot more of the nitty gritty details of running a retail store where AccountEdge is really the back end integration for accounting. Now we actually do have that back end integration. So you can use a you can use checkout in the front of your store, do what it does really well, which is what I'm showing you right here. You know, process all of your transactions, and then you can actually send those transactions back into AccountEdge 
or your friends at QuickBooks for that matter. So <laughs> we take it we take it again from an agnostic approach that, you know, we think we're the best, you know, small business point of sale system on the Mac and this is a Mac only product. Okay. So we want to support, you know, really the, the players who are on the Mac platform from an accounting standpoint. Okay. Uh, now can I support multiple uh, stores with uh, checkout? It's right now you can have multiple terminals within on your network and there's a network component to this which you can also get for free. When you start getting the multiple stores at that point you're kind of getting you're going to kind of get beyond our core customer base. So right now we focus on the single store, okay. the single location, although you might have multiple terminals at that location. Okay, um, and uh, is there quite a bit of customization? If maybe, let's say I was, uh, would I be able to configure a, like a restaurant, for example, with this? Is that possible? Yeah, restaurants are an interesting animal within they the, are. the sale market. <laughs> they and are. No, in all fairness, you, they are. I've yet to walk in any restaurant that has a Mac as a point of sale terminal. Uh -huh. That's not to say that it couldn't be done, because I know that there are point of sale systems for the Mac out there, but there's a lot of challenges in running a restaurant, not the least of which is tips and employee funds. And, you know, they want touch screens, and everyone thinks that's the way it's going to be going. But I'm not so sure you're going to see that in the near term on the Mac, you know, explode as a market. Okay. Because there's a ton of entry level systems on the PC side that are right. hardware solutions that are, you know, multi unit type of setups. But, you know, in our world, this is really more for the wine shop or the small hardware store or the, the art gallery, you know, those kind of places that put a premium, put a value on what is in the front of their store. But they want to have a nice looking iMac sitting there, not just, you know, frankly, a dumb PA. Uh, a dumb POS terminal that accesses a server somewhere. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, and now how is this licensed? This is licensed per the user. So if you have a network of three users, you're going to have three licenses, you know, much like most software in the market is owned okay. by the user. Okay. Uh, now, is there hardware that, that will work with this that might, might support a cache drawer or something like that? Yeah, exactly. We are, you know, aside from the Mac, and it'll run on basically any Mac with OS 10, call it 10.5 or higher, just to be safe. Right. Well, on the hardware side, we also offer a hardware bundle, which is that cache drawer I mentioned, a receipt printer, which is a star receipt printer, as well as a, um, you know, a barcode scanner. And, uh, you know, puts the whole system together. So for under $1,000, you can get the software and those three pieces of hardware. And you could literally be up and running that afternoon. And we have customers who've actually done that. We did a, we did a situation in New York just a couple of weeks ago for one of the TV channels that wanted to run a store for a three-day special they were doing on, I forget what network, but you would have heard of it. Okay. And literally that afternoon, they needed to have a point-of-sale system. It wasn't something they were going to spend weeks thinking about. And there are some, you know, let's be honest, there are some more complicated, you know, complex point of sale environments where it does take weeks to set this up because of the planning and the, the resources and the hardware and, you know, bringing it all together. But again, that's not who our customer is. So in this example, they were able to set this thing up to run outdoors for three days and, you know, it probably took them an hour or two to set it up. We also have uh, we also have consultants who we recommend out in the field because, again, we recognize not everybody is going to be able to figure all this stuff out. No matter how easy it, it looks to be able to use and how easy it is able to be used, you know, some people want help. They want someone to come in and just hold their hand through that getting started process. So whether it's a countage or a checkout, we've got experts out in the field across the U.S. and Canada who, uh, and around the world, actually, who will help you install either of our software packages. Now, what about if I want to combine, let's say I want to add a, a web-based presence with my retail store? Great okay. question. Uh, how do I handle that with checkout? Okay, so with checkout, our partner company that I mentioned in the Netherlands developed a product called NStore. So rather than going out and saying, hey, we need to integrate with the top 50 web store packages, and Lord knows, you know, nobody really owns that market. There's a lot of people who do web, you know, web e-commerce packages. So we realized that you know, there's a big challenge in trying to figure out who do you integrate with. If you pick the top five, you know, that could be, you know, 5% of the market. So they went and developed their own system, which is called NStore, which literally integrates directly with, with uh, the desktop, which means you could actually use Checkout or Account Edge, for that matter, okay. and actually create a web store using the NStore service and you get a really, really professional looking web store, much better than some of the, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollar systems that I've seen. But again, it gives our our core customer that, you know, the truly unique small business person, 
the ability to go online, sell at their store, sell online, and bring it all back into their general ledger and have all three systems work together. Now, what avenues does, uh, uh, and if you, if you wouldn't mind, maybe you could shoot us your video. Sure. Uh, what avenues does Acclivity uh, use to market it, its software? And uh, also, what's what's the th uh, thinking there at Clivity with the uh, the Apple uh, App Store for Macintosh? Well, that's that's a bunch of different questions. <laughs> right. The third one. So the App Store is going to be interesting, and it's it's getting a lot of really deserved press because obviously you can see what happened with the iPhone App Store. Yeah. The, the part that you're not really hearing much about is, you know, what about the account edges or the Microsoft offices or the Photoshop's or you know, even all your boys at into it. We had all those, you know, really long-term Mac, you know, significant pieces of software. You know, AutoCAD just came back to the Mac after all those yeah. years. Um, every one of those products, I'd be pretty comfortable saying, violates the, the, the protocol for the App Store. So I think what's going to happen, this is just my opinion. That's all I've got. Okay. <laughs> well, they're going to get a lot of really cool, young, you know, new, uh, maybe a, a iPhone-savvy developers who will maybe take some of the cool apps and bring them to the Mac, which is great. But a lot of the apps that have been there for a long time are going to need to have some, you know, substantial development done them, you know, because you can't use things like custom APIs. You can't, you can't gather customer information on a sale, which, you know, if you're a developer working in your garage, you know, maybe you're okay with that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in a case like ours, you know, if you're doing payroll, we need to know that you need to know that we know who you are. So if right. uh, you know Congress passes a new tax law, we want to be proactive and say, "Hey, man, you got new tax tables to deal with." So there's there's those kinds of issues that I, I suspect will get worked out. I don't know when, I don't know how, mm -hmm. um, but I think what's going to happen is, is it'll bring a lot more new vendors into the market who are software developers. Um, the bigger vendors who have got established products, they're going to have some challenges, whether they're you know a decent size like us or a mammoth size like Adobe. You know, there's going to be some questions there about. How are you going to sell Photoshop on the App Store? So beyond that, we also look to the Apple retail stores as a really important channel for us. Mm -hmm. Because when we go out and talk to the Apple stores, which we go to probably a third of the Apple stores every year in person, and we talk to the small business teams at the Apple stores, we hear the exact same thing at every single store, which is we're starving for accounting help. And what that means is, you know, when they bring, when the, the landscaper brings his kid into the Apple store to buy an iPad, all of a sudden they start thinking, wow, you know, if my kid can run his digital life on a Mac or an iPad or an iPhone, maybe I can run my landscaping business. Let me start asking some questions. <clears throat> and if you've never seen fear until you've seen an Apple store guy get asked a bunch of accounting questions. So we go out to the right. Apple store and, and, and we do training for those guys because we recognize you know, yeah, they can answer the iLife questions and the Microsoft Office questions and the video questions. If they get asked, you know, how do I put my store on the Internet using a Macintosh, you know, it starts to get a little bit more complicated than what's going to happen at the Apple store. So our goal is if we can meet every single Apple retail employee who's involved with small business face-to-face, -face, uh -huh. you know, shake their hand, do what I just did with you guys, you know, show you the product, show you how easy it really is to do it, uh -huh. show you that it's not brain surgery, uh -huh. then that Apple store guy, whether he's 18 years old or 48 years old, can say, hey, now I can at least have that conversation with you know, our people, our retail customers, people just walking off the street. And it's a really cool advantage to be able to meet those people face-to-face -face and you know, help the uh, – help the Apple staff because they love us. They know our story. They know we've been on the Mac, put out new versions for 22 consecutive years. We've never left the Mac like some of your friends. Right. All we do is Mac development, and they get that. They can see it in our products that we're Mac geeks. We're not PC people. So, uh, <laughs> Even though you do have version software, software for Windows, though. Yeah, and we also and we, and we and we tell that story. We say, hey, look, because we, <laughs> we know that landscaper is going to tell you they have an accountant who maybe not maybe they don't know what a Mac even looks like, shame on them. But yeah. part of the story is no problem. We'll give them a copy of our Windows software for free. This way you guys can talk to each other and it's cross platform. It's beautiful. So we 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 like the Apple channel. Even beyond that, the Apple like what we call the mom and pop Apple channel, the Apple specialists, we've also supported that channel for years. And those are the original, you know, what I'd like to call the original Apple stores or folks who made sure. the Apple name across the country. Sure. And there's and there's, you know, several hundred of them in North America that do a great job supporting 
um, the same customers that may go into an Apple store because they do stuff that the Apple stores don't do. And then we also support Apple, the Apple <laughs> Consultant Channel. We also have our own consultant channel. And those folks obviously are in a small business computer consulting uh, market, and they go out and find customers as well. So, you know, we like to support every channel through which, you know, software gets bought. Because what we're hearing from our customers is they're doing web searches, they're reading up online. You know, they're not walking into an office supply store to buy accounting software. I just, I fundamentally don't see how that happens. I mean, you can't learn enough from a box that you wouldn't learn from the website or a demo that you would do yourself. So, okay. You know, we, so we have a we question go, in the, the customers go. Yeah, uh, Todd, we have a question in the chat room. I think you've covered this earlier, but let's do it one more time. Will Account Edge export an accountant version of the data set in a format that can be read into QuickBooks? No. There you go. There's your answer. If no. they literally want a one button push this and give me the data file so I can open it in QuickBooks, no, I'm not going to okay. the book. It doesn't work that way. So essentially, you know, you are either a QuickBooks kind of person or you're an account edge person. From an accountant's perspective? No, from a user's. Uh, I mean, you commit to the account edge or, I mean, you commit to that platform and that's how you live. Yeah, you really wouldn't right. use both just because you know, right. one I mean, car garage having two cars won't get but, you. But, what, but uh, I think Scarecrow just kind of joined the chat room a little late. Uh, uh, but what's important to know is that if I understood you right, you get a version, a Windows version that you can give to your accountant that can uh, then work with your data files for your CPA. Yeah, the best, the best way for you okay. to be on the same page as your accounting professional, bookkeeper, accountant, PC, or Mac is for both of you to use the exact same software. Okay. Not a special version, not an exported, dumbed-down version, not a three-year-old version, but the same current version. So if our customers buy the 011 version, they get a coupon, they get a free serialized copy of the same version for either platform for their accountant. This way they can actually give their accountant their company file on a thumb drive or put it up on the web or burn a CD. They don't have to convert or do anything magical in the back end. Just give them your data file, and they can open it up in the Mac or the Windows app. There you go. Um, I hope, Scarecrow, that answers your questions. Um, well, you, you mentioned, okay, so you're, you visit about a third of the Apple stores out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to guess you guys also hit Macworld as well. We it, that's, a, that's an interesting topic. Okay, we, let's talk we about We were that. a very early supporter of Macworld, a long, long and I had the T-shirts to prove it somewhere. Um, uh -huh. Long time supporter of Macworld, but you know, over the years, just talking as one Mac geek to another, you know, yeah. Macworld, whether people want to admit it or not, kind of changed a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, when the iPods came out, obviously all those years ago, and then the iPhones came out, and then the, the i everything came out. A few things I, I having been to myself twenty five Macworlds, I can speak from some experience. Oh, I think Macworld changed from being you know more small business centered to being completely consumer centered with a little bit of small business thrown in. Okay. And over the years it's gotten smaller and smaller and then they started losing cities and moving cities. Um, they had two coasts, you know, they used to do Boston and California, then it right. was New York and California, then it was California. Then they dropped everywhere else like uh, London and other places. So we, you know, when Apple backed out of Macworld, we kind of we kind of took the opportunity to reevaluate it ourselves because the reality is for us as a company it never really came down to the money spent. And granted, we're flying across the country. We're putting up a half a dozen people. We're putting up a $50,000 booth, all that stuff. Yeah. As much as the economics are frightening, and it is, if you've ever dealt with a union. And I'm from Philly, and I know how to deal with the union. Okay. But if you've ever done all that stuff, just to show up, you know, is a monumental expense. But it was also like the worst time of the year for us. You know, it was right in the first couple of weeks of January which is obviously our busiest season of the year. People are upgrading tax tables yep. and versions. So when Apple took the uh, took the out, you know, we frankly reevaluated and said, you know what, it just makes sense for us to kind of follow their lead. So Macworld, since last year, we uh, we have not participated. And they'd love to have us. They come to our office. Um, no, I'm sure that they do. <laughs> yeah, I but, mean, uh, right. Yeah. You know, and uh, what about SMB Nation? Is that uh, anything that you've done? Or looked into. You know, we've 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 heard about that, and we've looked into a little bit, and you know, we kind of make the same, we kind of draw some of the same conclusions. Whether that we draw it macro is that, you know, the the time and the opportunity cost to get those kind of shows together, 
you know, it just it didn't pay off for us. Whether if you look at the event from an ROI perspective, <coughs> the event itself obviously is not just what happens at the event itself, but right. you know, trade shows in general. We just decided our effort is better spent in the perfect world, you know, hand to hand, which means going out as we talked about, you know, going out to these Apple stores, and we yeah. think that that actually gave us a lot more uh, bang for our buck, better use of our time. We can plan our time better. Okay. So, you know, we're kind of a neat example of how the trade show world maybe doesn't fit us anymore, or maybe we don't fit it. Um, but we also work with some of our partners who do do some of the local trade shows, even some of the CPA shows, which is an interesting place for us to show up. So um, so trade shows themselves, we really look at each one as a, you know, an individual project. But, you know, we're always willing to change our mind when good news happens. <laughs> well, uh, you're not the first company I've talked to that's kind of looking at the whole trade show game going well things have you know are changing out in the marketplace and the reality is it is quite expensive and we are looking at our return on what it costs to do this thing a lot closer um, and uh, so it's not going to be a surprise probably to see fewer and fewer companies maybe attending some of these events out there uh, as they're being more careful for their dollars um, I, I guess it's about time that we, man, I can't believe we've been talking for almost an hour now, Todd. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> who, who would have thought? Um, yeah, got accounting. Got so accounts. is there anything new or exciting on the horizon for, uh, for Acclivity that you might want to share with the audience? Yeah, a couple of things. Obviously, I showed you, uh, I showed you the iPad version of Account Edge Mobile. Mm -hmm. We're also going to be having an iPhone version of that in the next couple of weeks when we work out some of the interface differences there. And we're also going to have a web-based time billing service called Time Tracker, which following the same Dropbox uh, backend API access that we've developed, we're going to have a product that's a web-based tool, not iPhone or iPad, but a web-based tool. So folks like architects, engineers, accountants who want to have their staff fill out their timesheets online, we're going to create this online time tracking system called Time Tracker, Account Edge Time Tracker, which will let you let your employees or subcontractors fill out timesheets and again, synchronize those back into Account Edge. That's a really neat um, software as a service for us, which is a first uh, a first toe into that world. So 2011 is going to be good. We just came out with our 011 version. We just came out with new tax tables last week. We got Canadian versions, UK versions, Australian versions, iPad versions, iPhone versions. You know, web time tracking. So a bunch of cool stuff going on. And you know, like I said earlier, all we do is keep putting out cool software for Macs and Windows. And, and how many, just out of curiosity, how many people work at uh, Acclivity? Up at the office in northern Jersey, a couple hours north of where I am. Um, we have about 50 employees there, which covers all the various aspects of the business, from development, you know, support, sales, marketing, admin. We've also got some remote employees like myself. We've got some remote uh, developers um, over in the U.K., actually, who help us with our European and international versions. And we also uh, have some developers down in Australia who help our development team on the US on the um, Windows side. So we still partner with our old parent company, the old MYO, what is still yep. MYOB over right. in Australia. Yeah. But the local the local representation in total is about fifty people. Well, um, and there's all I'm sorry. There's also seasonal people, which I can't well, get because they're the ones on the phone as we speak getting the. Uh, get all the calls coming in. So during the busy season, we'll explode up like another 10 or 15 headcount just to do some of the initial call support that we get from our new customers because we take care of them extra special. Okay. Um, uh, we have uh, Mr. Todd uh, Sokovitz. He is the product evangelist from Acclivity Software. Uh, can we, uh, and how would we follow your company on Twitter, by the way? Uh, you just go to a, uh, go to Twitter and look up Account Edge, and you'll find us. We Twitter as Account Edge, or just go to our website, accountedge.com. You can go to our blog on our website. Obviously, you can get there from Account Edge or clivitysoftware.com. Okay. But, you know, all that stuff is linked off in the website, of course. Accountedge.com. You got right. it. Okay. Uh, Todd, we want to thank you so much for being on today's show, and I always like to give our guests the last word. Uh, so the floor is yours, whatever you might want the audience to know before we sign off for the day. Yeah, I'll just say Eagles by 10 this Sunday. How's that? Oh, yeah, I'll take it that way. Eagle, really? <laughs> by 10? You're a gambling man, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs>
Okay. Chris, okay. Thank you very much for the opportunity. This was this was great. Thank you so much, uh, Todd, for coming by. And everybody, we want to re- remind you that the next episode of Frugal Tech Live will be Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It'll be a uh, uh, Business Computing Weekly with my co-host, the Queen Cindy, and I. You don't want to miss that. So, from all of us here at Frugal Brothers and Frugal Tech Live, remember: if it's in your shop, not making you money or saving you money, get it out of there. We'll talk to you later.